You'll often hear that simplicity is the most important thing when it comes to taking good photos. So I decided to ask myself, how can I strip back my photos as much as possible? This is the story of how simplicity saves my photography. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got no idea what I'm gonna to find today. It's one of those days where I'm in somewhere completely new. I don't know what I'm looking for, but sometimes you need those days to really find something new with your photography. So I'm recording this in the new year, and if I'm completely honest, it's not started off very well for me. I hope you've had a great start to the year, but um, I've been ill for weeks and I've only just got over it really. And um, it's made me feel, I mean, I always struggle in winter anyway, but I've really felt not very good about my photography recently. I've had a lot of imposter syndrome and it's actually been quite difficult for me to force myself to get back out again. I've just had no motivation for photography whatsoever. I think it's a combination of having been ill for a long time, uh, not having any good photos for a long time, and not having any good conditions for a long time, especially in the part of the UK where I live. We've had nothing. It's literally just been gray for months now, gray or rain. And while it is possible to get good photos in those conditions, they are not very inspirational. I love good light with photography and we just haven't had that in such a long time. So today is a case of getting back on the horse and just going out with zero expectations. And because of that, I've come up with a bit of a plan to give myself a boost. Now it's very common at this time of year to lose inspiration for photography. You may even feel it yourself and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's a good reason for it. Because if you notice, there's absolutely no color whatsoever other than a few greens and browns. And one thing that's often forgotten is just how important light is to photography. One thing that you'll soon come to learn if you're a beginner photographer is that you really need good light to take what is just a, a, a well-composed picture to a work of art. So that you know what it is that I'm talking about, I found a prime example here. You've got this gorgeous character of a tree. It's a beautiful silver birch that's just growing in a perfect curve over this path. A great example of a character to look for in a forest. Unfortunately, because of the flat conditions and the lack of mist, there's no separation. This tree just blends completely into the background and it just makes for a very 2D looking picture. It hasn't got that pop that you need to make it a great picture. And because of that, this just, it doesn't work. The good thing is though, that I know this is here now. So when we do get those conditions, then I know exactly where to come to find a good composition. So we've established the problem. How do we fix it? Well, you can either fight against it or you can lead into it. The other problem to tell you is that everywhere is absolutely sodden and muddy. Oh. If you come to the UK in winter, make sure you invest in a good pair of boots. You see, photography is as much about telling a story with your photos as it is about taking arty photos. There's sort of a balance to be found, obviously. Light, as I said, is absolutely important. But there are ways of finding interest in other things. For example, if you find an interesting character or subject to take a picture of, then even in flat light, that can make a good picture. Or you can try experimenting a little bit. Sometimes you need to come to the top of the world to give yourself a little bit of perspective. Well, it's a nice view, but as you well know, a good view doesn't always mean a good picture. When I'm really struggling to make art out of my photography, when the conditions just aren't right, I try to start thinking of myself less as a landscape photographer or an outdoor photographer, and more of a documentary photographer. Because if you can find stories to tell, then that is another source of interest for your viewers to see. If you can find stuff in your environment that will catch your viewers' interest, then you'll get more than just a glancing look. The funny thing about coming somewhere completely new and just experimenting and seeing what you see 
is that there's a fine balance between just looking for photos and actually just enjoying yourself because that's part of the experience of outdoor photography for me is just being in the environment, enjoying it, observing it. I don't necessarily need to find the good pictures to enjoy it. And I've discovered so many new places that I've never been before just through photography. I've definitely not come away with photos from everyone, but I can't ever remember a time where I regretted going out to take photos. You see, when you look more to tell stories than take pictures, then your pictures become more than just the light, the conditions. They become about what's happening in your picture. This idea that you have to have everything perfect is a trap I've fallen into many times. And often it's when I've just thrown out those rules that I get some of my more interesting photos. So those photos that you just saw then, they're the photos I'm going to use to really make this point. Because while I didn't get any good photos on that day out, there's an important lesson to be taken away. On these photos, the conditions were, again, not particularly good, generally flat and grey. But I happened to be in the right place at the right time. For example, in this photo, I was just on a family day out. I happened to have my camera with me and we were walking around the lake and I happened to spot this bike just locked up by the side of a lake. I wasn't there to take photos. And because I went for the most obvious story, the most obvious composition, it really works as a photo. It's very obvious what I want the viewer to look at. Now this photo here actually happened on the exact same day. It's amazing what you can find when you're not actually looking for it. As you can see, there was a bit of a break in the cloud. We had a little bit of sunshine come through. And because of that, it really backlit the subject of this photo. That's these two people that are sitting on the bench. Now, if those people weren't there, it would still be a nice photo, but there would be no story behind the photo. Whereas by adding those two people who are enjoying the view, this goes from being just a simple picture to a picture about something. And this picture, again, was completely unexpected. This was actually when I was doing my day job. Uh, I was at a customer's house really early in the morning. The sun was just coming up, and I just happened to notice there were some nice shapes uh, with the buildings working together. Uh, and combine that with the clouds, you know, line up perfectly. It made for a much more interesting photo than just a simple snapshot. Uh, what's even more interesting about this is that I didn't have a camera with me at all. That was taken on my iPhone. But because I was just thinking in really simple terms, I was able to grab that snapshot in time. If I had overthought it, then it never would have happened for me. Now, the simplicity behind this photo uh, is in more than one sense, because... The very obvious sense is that I've stripped away any colour. I've made it a black and white photo because I feel that gives this a bit more punch because it becomes much more about the character of the photo than any colours that are around him. Now, in this case, this character happens to be my dad. <laughs> we were just in their garden enjoying a sunny afternoon. And once again, I wasn't there to take photos. I was just enjoying a nice family afternoon at my mum and dad's house. But because I happened to just see this scene, this very simple scene of my dad taking a phone call sat on uh, a reel for giant electric cables, which he'd managed to get from work. It adds a layer of interest to this photo that just otherwise it wouldn't be there. Now, you will notice that I did give a lot of thought to the composition of this. I didn't just quickly take a snapshot. I positioned myself correctly so I could get the shadow composed properly and I could get the edges of the frame correct, you know, with the tree just cutting in and the leaves around him and also having him backlit. So I did think about this photo but I thought about it in terms of how can I tell this story in the most simple way. And what I ended up with is one of my favourite photos of my dad uh, that I've ever got. And what this video kind of proves, I think, is that every time you go out, is you're not going to get good photos. I didn't get any good photos on that day. I got a couple of uh, sort of storytelling photos, but nothing that we going in my portfolio. Whereas sometimes the photos happen to you. So if you are open to taking simple pictures and telling simple stories, then you can never go wrong as a photographer. I'll see you next time.